Hey everybody, before we jump right into the action, I just wanted to let you know that these things are streamed on Twitch and if you want to hang out with me while I'm live, you can follow the channel, will be the first link in the description. Okay, we got a game, opponent opens up with e4, we're gonna be going for another rock solid Karo Khan and we see f4 move which is actually not that bad and against there we could genuinely play it like in the c5 line. I think we're just going to be doing that. c5, get a knight out onto c6. Mm. Okay, bishop to b5. Could play bishop g4. Could also play with e6. I think this game I'm just going to be playing it with e6. Just because I want to show you guys a trick. I'm going to go here and I'll, I'm literally fishing for a dirty trick here. Like, let's say if he castles, like most people do. Unfortunately, this one did not. Uh, it was about, like, to go knight takes on e5 and bishop takes. We could take back. One gives back the bishop, which is fine. I'm going to take with the bishop in this uh, instance because we already have the strong pawns. So on d4, just going to go e6, opening up bishop's path. And now could activate a knight, get it to f5. We'll also start with h5, because once I get it there, I don't really want to run into any g4 stuff, so I think that's maybe useful to throw in. Not sure if he could do f5, I kind of doubt that he can. Maybe it's his best try, because if I get to maneuver my knight towards f5, it's going to be like a pretty easy game for me, since he won't have any ways to break. So... Queen e1, pretty logical move for this structure, but now the knight has a free path towards f5, and okay, just keep developing. He clearly want, wanted to push f5, but we can just get to develop with tempo. Don't even need to think about pawns like that on d4, because we would have gone f5 and would have pushed in the center. So we can just take that, create a very weak pawn, and... Even combine it with knight f5. Maybe now even ideas to bring the rook over. Combine it with the bishop on the long diagonal. And I think that is going to be a mating combination in general. So, yeah, just looking forward to do that. Still could have gone like cd. That was fine here. But just prioritizing development. It works much better. Especially in the opening phase. Yeah, and now I'm just going to bring the rook. See, we already have three, four attackers against what looks to be more of like a lonely king. Now time to go d4, open up this diagonal. Could have also taken the pawn as well. But uh, preparing this check. King is about to get mated. I take the rook. <coughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> and now uh, bring our rook with check. King h1 and queen d5 will be mate, so... Only move for him is queen e4, but he can take it, and that is just going to lead to pretty first uh, eight. So, yeah, what you can basically take from this game is the fact that uh, instead of going knight h6 immediately, I went h5. Not sure actually h5 was good. Maybe he had f5, like as I was saying. But my problem with this was that if we get knight f5, g4, I wasn't so sure whether we get a good version of or not after this move. Because, you know, maybe he can still go f5, and I was a little bit unsure if our king is stuck in the middle, so... Just wanted to get this version after we get a knight to f5, and it's basically just uh, winning. The way he played it in the game, getting the black pieces, gonna be trying another Karo Khan and we get to face the kill Billy attack, but most of them will just go ED5 in this position that gets played literally all the time in low rated games. And we can just stay back with a C pawn, the bishop, go 96, develop the other one to F6 and now it is actually just gonna be an improved version of the Exchange variation, go like knight f6, bishop g4, 
keep in mind the same ideas that we have in the normal line, where we just go for the minority attack and play on the queen side. Always develop the bishop to g4. Uh, now we might already have ideas to take on f3 and play knight takes on d4. But we'll do e6 first, making sure this is protected, and now we take. They're always gonna forget about the d4 pawn, and you can win so many free pawns like this. It's just absolutely insane. People usually will just forget about the fact that the queen needs to protect that pawn, and um, you can easily win it that way. Whenever they give the check, you can simply move the knight backwards or against queen d1, and just basically continue your game. While being an extra pawn, being up an extra pawn, so bishop e7, castle short, just try to also initiate as many trades as you can. This is the golden rule when we are having the extra material, so rook c8, pretty helpful as well. We'll play h6 soon to see what the bishop has in mind and. Yeah. Still, white is only down a pawn, so this is not like an automatic win. To be honest, what my students actually do wrong in these kind of positions, they always try to like uh, go d4, e5, try to push the pawns quickly and leave many weak squares, when in fact, you just need to like try to chip away on his pieces first, maybe trade bishops, trade knights, and then slowly push pawns. But you have to be very careful. You need to make sure you maximize the potential of your pieces first and only then uh, try to go for the final blow in the end game so just knight e4 now that the knight moved away centralizing and play with the idea to exchange a pair of bishops well let's see i'm gonna be taking back with a queen and in case of knight e4 Again, I would just be happy to trade. That move allows to give a little check, maybe infiltrating on f2. That's kind of only move now to avoid disaster. But still, we can at the very least just go knight f6 back. Maybe you could be more aggressive and try, try to infiltrate, but probably we'll just um, keep it simple and uh, go knight f6 there. King h1, get the royal fork. <laughs> Managed to win the queen, which is like uh, pretty nice as well. So let's see. Okay, opponent taking some time. What are the odds that this opponent disconnected as well? <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Okay, to be honest, now it looks more like a disconnection. <laughs> Which is a bit unfortunate because we have to do the waiting part, but um, yeah. I guess you have to go through these when you win the games. Okay, King H2. Maybe he just uh, is thinking about what kind of move to play. So it looks like no disconnection. Just gonna try to infiltrate, hit the knight. If rookie wants simply knight e5, I think it's crashing. Running knight takes on f3, taking advantage of the pin. We're gonna do that now, I think against no matter what he plays. I think white is simply paralyzed. So let's see. King h1 would be like best move, but kind of doubt that he'll find it. And yeah, we can just take. Can't take as the pony spin and win the rook, go queen e1, win the other rook. So now he finds the resign button and we managed to get this one in. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. And if you're interested in uh, checking out my London system course, will be the First link uh, in the description. So thanks again, and I'll see you around on the channel.
Take care.